Well, this is Steve, and I'm here with Liz Brown, uh, who is running on the Republican ticket for the mayor's position yes. in May. Uh, appreciate your time today. Thank you. Sure. I um, want to talk a little bit about some, some things that are going on and, and just some feelings and kind of find out a little bit more about you. Or, or what makes you the best candidate for to be our next mayor? Well, I'm serving the end of my first term on council. I've been on council for four years. And when I was elected to council as a council representative at large, I took my responsibility, my duty, to serve the citizens. I considered that an important obligation, and I've tried to do that by watching out and be a good steward for their dollars and what programs and services we provide for them, how to do that better, and uh, not costing them more at the same time. And while I think I've done a very good job on council doing that, it has been quite apparent to me the last four years that the significant changes and uh, differences that need to be made going forward, you can't make them just sitting in the city council seat. They need to come from the mayor's office. And so those are the, the things that I want to do is make those changes, and you can only do that as mayor of the city of Fort Wayne. Whenever someone asks me, what do I think about Liz Brown? The first phrase that always comes to mind is she's probably the hardest working council member that we've had in, in years. I mean, you've really become immersed in the details and the nuts and bolts of city government. I know the budget process. Uh, you were uh, the chairman of that committee last year and in yes. charge of the budget process. Two years ago. Two years ago, I'm sorry. And, and you really just dug in and, and really learned all that you could about it. Um, how would you feel with that assessment that, that you're hardworking and I, I am hardworking. I don't think I'm the most hardworking, but I certainly am very hardworking. I have the uh, time and ability to do that to really get to know a lot of the different departments. I've really dug down deep into how they work, the processes, and that's why I know where the improvements can be made, not just in how we work with our citizens, but how we work inside city government, inside that new building. And I'm going to be running the budget again this year. And uh, as, as people who paid attention to city government in the last four years know, many of the cuts that I've brought forth don't always uh, succeed. We don't always get to make those cuts in the budget, but it's going to happen if I'm in the mayor's seat because I won't bring those expenses forward to the council going forward. So I, I have the time to do this, but I also, I think, have found my niche. I really enjoy what I do. And, and there were several things that I know early on in the term uh, yourself and some of the other council members expressed dissatisfaction over the way things were handled. For one thing was the tax abatement. And then before we know it, yourself and, and Councilwoman Goldner are bringing forth an ordinance to change that. There have been other things that uh, you've brought before the, the council to try and change, sometimes successful, not always successful. Right. Um, do you think that's part of the game as well, as far as getting involved and trying to change things? Absolutely. The first year I was on council, I served on the Housing and Neighborhood Development Services Board. Now I'm in the middle of a task force, if you will, or committee to look at how we can better use our agencies and departments that provide housing, but also what is the bigger picture in the plan and trying to work with the county on that because they have a lot of properties that are vacant or blighted and they are in the city limits. So you, you learn, you start to scratch the surface, and uh, once you scratch the surface, you find out there's always more to be done. And, I, and I've done that consistently. I mean, I was on the garbage task force and learned a lot about recycling and realized uh, when the first garbage contract was brought to us that we could do more, we did. We got a pretty good rate for the citizens. I was on, de developed a public safety task force before 911 was co located, before the sheriff and uh, city police are going to be located and to look at how we could work together better not just with them but with the volunteer fire departments out in the county as well as our own fire firefighters and so those kinds of things when you start to look at the processes and you just start to ask questions and when the answers are not satisfactory you realize well let's see how we can fix this and improve it and I think I've proven that by joining the committees and actually putting my own skin in the game if you will that I'm willing to do the work to make those improvements it's not just window dressing mm -hmm. What do you think the role of the mayor is? Well, on a good day, the role of the mayor, if everything was working well and all these changes were made, he or she would be a great cheerleader for the city. They'd be someone getting out there in the community telling businesses how wonderful it is to do work here, to, to, to grow your business or to build it here, expand, and also uh, listening to the citizens' needs. But right now, the additional work of the mayor will be going forward in the next term 
to get down into the belly, if you will, of the city and figure out how we can change things so that those businesses do want to grow and expand here. Because anything I've heard in the business community is how difficult it is to do business here, and I haven't seen those changes being made. And that's not just something that's come up in election year. I think all of my fellow Republican uh, candidates would say the same thing, that we've heard this over and over again, and we just need to really start making those changes now, because if we don't, those businesses, as they grow, will go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. How much of, of, of some of those changes how much of that is the result from maybe not keeping up with different trends in business and, and not keeping up with technological advances? Uh, how much of it is that and how much of it is just it's government as usual? I think it's a combination of both. I mean, business or government is always a little bit behind the technological curve, I think, um, but we are certainly way behind in terms of being able to do permitting and things online. We've been talking about it just a few services you're now be able to pay by credit card. Uh, those are the kinds of things that are just unimaginable out in the business world. They've had to pay for improvements in order to stay abreast. Bus uh, government has a monopoly, so we don't have to make those changes as fast as the business world does. But we lose in the end, too, because those who stay here have to work with us, but there are others who make choices and go elsewhere. So that's part of it. It is the technology, but it also is just bureaucracy. And since we are a monopoly, people have to follow our rules. We don't have to adapt. And so sometimes we just continue to add layers of rules. Permitting processes can be very arduous and lengthy, and we don't have to make those changes. And every once in a while, which is something I would be passionate about doing, is you step back and look and say, start from scratch, we don't need to do all these things. It's too difficult and not necessary. And I've seen a lot of that in four years. A lot of things we do are not necessary.